A three-year-old girl was admitted to the hospital after being severely beaten by her mother's boyfriend. The child was beaten so badly that part of her brain had to be removed, and doctors stated that the little girl only has a 10% chance of surviving. We got home, she was trying to eat dinner, and she, she ate prior to that, like a couple of hours ago. So she wasn't really hungry, so she was picking at it. And that must have triggered something in his brain, and he went crazy. Picked her Who's up by he? my boyfriend at the time. And so I was in the kitchen, and he had, I heard a slam, and I came out, and he had my daughter by the throat on the wall. What did you do? Started screaming at him, and he put her down. And then what happened? And she was walking away, and he picked her up, and he threw her on her couch. And I started coming, going after him, and he pushed me to the ground. And my glasses flew off my face, and I was trying to look for my glasses. And when I woke when I got them on, I seen her face plant to the ground face first, and she was going into a seizure. <laughs> he told me we're not calling 911 because she already had prior bruises to her on Sunday. Because she what? She had prior bruises to her on Sunday. <laughs> she was abused on Sunday? Yes. By him? What did he do on Sunday? <laughs> he was trying to drown her in the tub. <laughs> He tried to drown her on Sunday. <laughs> then how did this happen a couple days later? Because I wasn't allowed to go nowhere. I wasn't allowed to have my phone or nothing. How many times prior had he abused her? Well, they weren't here as bad, but at least four times. When did you start seeing him? June. June. So June, July, August, September, and in October, he almost kills her. Did you ever call the police? No. The police show up. They were outside. I seen it from the window. So you couldn't go to the window and say, help! It was three stories high. I mean, they had to remove part of your yes. daughter's brain. And Children and Youth was at my house the same day that that happened. Seemed to with black and blues and didn't ask her nothing. So it's their fault. No, it's not their fault. Whose fault is it? Mine. When the police were there, uh, when there's your parents there, when all these people are there, you're not handcuffed and gagged, right? No. You're not stuffed in a footlocker under the bed? No. So you could have ran and screamed? Yes, but you guys don't understand the terror that he put into me. How long before you got help for? It was like 45 minutes. So a seizure and she suffered for 45 minutes without getting medical yes. attention. If I could actually light these chairs on fire right now, I would. I would burn them so you can never sit on it again. Do you think that if your daughter were to recover, and I'll say this, I really hope she does. She's um, going to. Well, let's hope so. Do you think that you should get her back? Yes. How would we trust you that you wouldn't put her in a situation? What if a, another 19-year-old goofball comes along and imprisons you again? It's not going to happen again because I don't Why? want nobody else. Samantha is my dad's ex fiance and they had a daughter together. After she left my dad, she started going downhill, so we stopped talking. The doctor said that my sister has a 10% chance of living, and if she does recover, she'll probably most likely be in a wheelchair. She'll be tube fed. I think Sam had a part of it. You're, you're not in this situation, believe. you don't understand. No, I wouldn't allow to be in your situation. I wouldn't allow anybody to hurt my children. You think I allowed them? That is my you, sister no. that you allowed you to get a I did not allow for her to yes, you did. think I wanted this to happen? Are you kidding me? September 7th. I did not. You went back. Yes, you didn't know what the things that happened in between them. I was there to help you. I called them so many times. Sit there are so many opportunities that you could have gotten her out and you did not get her out. How about the time when you were out in the car driving around? Wasn't there because he was there with the, with the children and youth case worker. Why didn't you go to a police station? The day before this all happened, you went to your sister's house by yourself. Why didn't you do something then? You don't think he was lingering around? He was oh, around. How about get real. Get real. You sound pathetic. What would he do to you if he found out you said something to your sister or called the police? What would he do to you? My daughter and I both wouldn't be alive. Yeah, right. I tried everything I could to get my granddaughter and daughter out of there. And I knew stuff was going on in there. I seen bruises on my daughter and granddaughter. I tried to get my daughter to leave, and he wouldn't let her leave. But knowing everything that I know, hearing your daughter tell the story today, 
You don't think she did anything wrong? I do. I think I do think she could have got my granddaughter out of there. This 19-year-old kid who just came in my daughter's life won't allow me, grandma, to see my granddaughter. Oh, I went to his house. And? They wouldn't let me in. He wouldn't let me in to see her. I and said, what did I went, you do? I said, I want to see my granddaughter. And what happened? They shut the door in my face, and I called the cops. And what happened? Not really much. Your daughter was being abused by a man who came into the relationship as a domestic abuser, and then you see your daughter with a black eye, and you didn't call the police. Not that time. But you I called didn't. the police because he wouldn't let us see your granddaughter. Mm -hmm. I called the cops and children and youth, and children and youth didn't want to do anything to help me. So I didn't Why really did know. Why did you call children and youth, though? For the him abusing my granddaughter and daughter. How did you know about that? I've seen the bruises on my granddaughter. When was this? In, on the 4th of July. Oh, so the abuse already had started on the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. Your daughter said that didn't start until months later. Do you feel you did enough to protect your daughter and your granddaughter? No, I felt that I wanted to do more, but I didn't know what to do. You had opportunity to get your daughter help. You had opportunity to protect her. Your mother showed up at the door. She called the police. The police were called to your house. You have talked to your sisters multiple times on the phone. You were over at your sister's house. You went to a 4th of July party without your boyfriend. You never did anything. Well, that's at your every... opinion. No, it's not my opinion. Yes, it is. It's a fact. No, it's not. It's a fact. OK. I don't need a test to tell me that you failed your daughter. I don't need a test to tell me that when it came to your own daughter who's fighting for life, that you're a coward. I don't need a test to tell me that you're one of the most miserable mothers. Thank you. I've you're a you, oh, look at the fight in her. That's the fight everybody wanted to see when you had your daughter. That's the fight. Yeah, look at She's pushing the door. Yes, because oh you're the fight when you were with that guy. Yes, and I, I got kicked out of him every single time. What was that fight And then? I did try. I did this? try. No, and all they did was give me air and get my daughter in. You didn't her. say anything. Yes, because it was me. You didn't do that anything. That was my fight between him and I. All this fight that you were doing, you should have been doing it then. Yes, that was our fight. My daughter had nothing to do with it. Now your daughter might die because of you. You. No, it's not because of me. I hope you crawl me. into a hole. Okay, thank you. And you just go away forever. And thank I hope you. you'll never get your daughter again. Uh, for the audience and for you. And basically, uh, the lie detector test, did you cause any of your daughter's injuries? She answered no. She told the truth. But to me, that means nothing. Because she didn't stop the injuries, but she's exposed. And everybody in that town where you're from who thinks that uh, she's to blame. I think she's to blame. That just two days after Samantha's appearance on my show, she was arrested and charged with felony counts of endangering the welfare of children, obstruction of a child abuse case, and hindering apprehension for prosecution. Bail was set at $200,000. And then more reports came out that Samantha's ex-boyfriend's mother was taken into custody and charged with felony intimidation, retaliation, or obstruction in child abuse cases, felony hindering apprehension and prosecution, and a misdemeanor charge of false reports to law enforcement. And that brings the counts of three people who have been arrested in connection with the abuse of this three-year-old little girl. Hi, Steve. I just wanted to give you a brief update on my sister. Um, a couple days after your show, she had a stroke and her brain started bleeding and filling with fluids. The doctor told us she has not improved and practically told us there is no hope. If she lives, she will never wake up, um, that she will be like this for the rest of her life. So Monday we made the decision to take her off the ventilator and see where she goes from there. If she breathes on her own, that's awesome, but if not, we're gonna let her go because she has been in a lot of pain and suffering and they've been drugging her up a lot and that's just not a life to live. I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you.